Good afternoon, US. Good evening, UK. I hope everyone is well. And tonight I've got Penny Griffiths Morgan joining me. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. You you sounded like an air hostess then doing the announcement, the safety briefing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. I um, I think exits well, it, to the and to the side over the wings. Yeah. I thought you'd take the pee out of me at work because I said that I was singing on the phone. <laughs> I don't know. It's just the way I talk. Hey ho. <laughs> anyway, on that note. <laughs> yeah, but it's not even gone live yet, so I don't know where it's gone. It's kind of got lost somewhere. Yeah, I, I, uh, I noticed that. I was just looking for it. It's yeah, not appeared okay. on the page yet. So, um, God knows where yeah, it is in the it's going, it's going somewhere. And we've got somebody viewing it as well. So, uh, yeah. Hello oh, and well, welcome. So, uh, we'll carry on. I don't quite know where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, we almost broke into song then, you know. I don't know where we're going. That was a sort of thing. Where are we? I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know why it's gone live, to be fair, but um, yeah, it's gone funny. It's definitely not appearing. No, it seems to be a glitch with Facebook, I oh, think. Oh, well, we'll keep talking. Yeah, that's right. Must be. It, we'll it, keep it talking. Glitched. Mm. Oh, it's finally through. So, oh, hello, oh, everyone. <laughs> yeah, we're finally getting there. So, it seems to be a glitch with Facebook. So, um, yeah, you'll all be joining at some stage. Hopefully. So just had a quick chat, and uh, you've been, just been so busy, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Um, I do like to keep keep myself busy. I'm just looking it up on the page now myself. There we go. There yeah. we go. Yeah, I do like to keep myself um, busy. It's it stops me getting bored, basically. And when I get bored, I'm trouble. So. Oh, are you? I'm trouble. I'm trouble just doing what I do. I can't do anything without getting into trouble. You know, I've just got a natural ability to get myself into trouble without trying. But that's life, isn't it? You know. I don't try to get into trouble, but I, I get. I, I get. A bit, I, but the thing is, I'm one of those people. I do side quests all the time. Like someone will ask me to research something, and I'll be researching it, um, and then I'll find something in the research that interests me a little bit more than what I'm researching, and off I go. Off you go on a trip, and then you have to go back to the original one. And it yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. I found that yeah. with my book, though, because I just started it, and, I, oh, gosh, you know, well, you do know when you start a book, but this was the first one. So I went a lot into the history of locations. Mm -hmm. which I was you trying, you're going for my job now? No, no. It's just that <laughs> I didn't know how to write a book, and I thought, no. well, how am I going to fill a book? So I started getting all the history and then you just go off on it and it's like, oh, wow, you know, and then you're just trying to prove something and, you know, and there's, there's some relationship, I think, with my church and Newstead Abbey and yeah. um, Annesley Hall, a place which fascinated me. And, you know, wh when you notice that, you think, well, why, you know, c can I prove That's that? Good. That is a good. No. That is a good trait to have. It's what yeah. I, it's what drives people nuts about me. I always want to know the why. Why did that happen? Who did it? Yeah. Why? Why? And then I get going down these blasted rabbit warrens of research trying to find out the answers. And then I'm calling other historians who I know going, "Do you know where I could find the answer to this?" And they're like, "Oh, not again." Yeah, it's it's. Um, yeah, because I've, I did it with Barry John because he does a lot at Newstead. It sort mm. of does things there, and I was like, well. You know, it's all about but look, Byron and mm -hmm. people associated with that. I've said, well, have you got anything there which has got the link to my church, you know, and the family? Because it, it sounds like they were sort of in this area and they've been interned yeah. in the church. And yet they've gone over there, the family have. And, you know, where's the link? Because I've always, always been fascinated with Annesley Hall, which is a child mm -hmm. with Buster's family, which... And it, it's just like, isn't it? But you know, mm -hmm. you know history. You know that that's what you do all the time, isn't it? And yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and and why every my husband ignores me now when I'm sat on my laptop in my little alcove off our living room, and he suddenly and I've got headphones on because I'll be listening to something, and you'll suddenly hear me go, "Yes, you you <laughs> two pieces. You've got the link between two. Th yes, yes. And it'll be something quite minor." But I'll, I'll get these little, uh, uh, or like I'll find a newspaper article from like 1842 that gives me the answer to something I've been searching for. And I do little happy dances. I think oh, my family brilliant. are just so used to it now. <laughs> They're like, Classic. oh, mum's, the mum's found something, you know. And then the other one is they see me sitting there doing this and they're like, you're struggling. Mm, 
mm, I can't find what I need. Yeah, they, they get used to it. <laughs> yeah, but it is frustrating and it, I'm, I'm not very good at researching. I, I guess you learn, you develop to do it, you don't do. you? Really? You, do. you know, like at the moment, you're like, you think, well, you know, all I do is Google, but, you know, let's get down to the library. What, that's what they're there for, isn't it? Libraries, archi- I love archives, like um, like county archives. Yeah. The And, I mean, I, I went to, for the last book I wrote, the Epping book, I actually went to the National Archives at Kew for the first oh, time wow. ever. All my days, it was like the mothership had called me home. I did not want to leave. I think I was there for seven hours looking at old documents and my eyes were kind of... And I was like, I really didn't want to leave because it was just a treasure trove. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, archives. Once archives are a brilliant source, and but it is a case of um, plowing through stuff until you find that one bit that links to the next bit, and then you find links to things. And and I I like that side of things. And but it is something that I mean, Kate Sherrill and I discuss this quite a lot and it is something it takes practice to get good at it to know where to look for things and to know possibly what sources to use for different time periods and it's not it's not instant um but it's one of those things that i i would say to anyone watching listening if you're researching something you've hit a brick wall ask someone else if they've got any ideas because that's how i learned I asked other people. So um, I was, I was when I was researching something to do with Henry V for the last year's Festival of the Unexplained. Because I did a right. tour around Kenilworth Castle, and I wanted to find out. Oh, if it's I love true. that place. It's yeah, brilliant. it's one of my favourite places. Yeah, I wanted to find out if it was true that he'd been sent by I think it was the Dauphin of France some balls and a cushion, implying he was too young to be running a country. Oh, okay. And I wanted to find out if this was true. And I couldn't get anywhere with it. I just kept reading, oh, it said that. So um, I was actually going to a meet and greet with the historian, Dan Jones. And I thought I'd ask him, did he know? And he told me exactly where to find the sort of where that comes from. So, and and I find that a lot of historians and or even sort of paranormal people are used to researching and really digging into research rather than just reading hearsay. Yeah, most most, and I'm, I'd include myself in this. I'm always more than happy to tell someone where to look, because it's shared knowledge, and yeah. that's how you learn. So that's I would great. say to anyone listening who kind of gets stuck on the research, ask someone who maybe is slightly further ahead in like learn, doing research. Don't ask them to do the research for you. Oh, but ask them where no. they would look. <laughs> yeah, I well, know the thing is, I would because I love it. And, yeah, and that's but... why my side quests, but I try to rather than do it for people, I try and um, teach them how to do it that's so right, that they get that yeah. sense of achievement. That's like right. I did when it was taught to me. Yeah, but so sort of, do you get ideas of how it should be? You know, do, do you get theories and then you try and back that up with the history in any case? I don't know if I go in with any preconceptions to things. I mean, right. sometimes I know we were, we were saying that you want to know the reasons why. Yeah. Well, I like to know where's this come from. I mean, for example, let's take um, I think it's Sir Thomas More, very famous, having written a book that slated Richard the Third and said Richard the Third killed his nephews. Right. I wanted to know wh- where did that come from because uh-huh. Thomas More was a child when all of that happened. So how would he have known? Yeah. Now, this is the big question. Where did it come from? But that's the kind of thing that I'm more interested in, that if I can't work out. So if, for example, Sir Thomas More had been Richard III's priest, for want of a better question, yes, I can almost understand it. He witnessed it. But he wasn't. And so there's little things like that, that that's when I get. um, I I want to find the truth, if that makes sense. It's like, I mean, you know, know, when people talk about Victorian workhouses, which is one of my specialisms. That fascinates me, yeah. And it's when they say how awful they were and how they were. I think I got called once a white supremacist Nazi for trying to explain the history behind them. And that, oh, yeah, yeah, I've been, mm, um, and that they were nothing but concentration camps for the poor. And I was arguing 
No, they were the ori origins of the welfare state. Okay. That's what they were. And 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 try and so I decided to go off and find proof to show that what was the other thing I heard? Nobody left them unless it was in a box. And so I decided to go off and find proof that that wasn't the case, yeah. which I found. That's so yeah. it's that's the sort of thing that you know if if I'm like well actually no that wasn't the case I'm pretty sure that's not the case but I want to find proof that I'm and and if I'm wrong, I admit it I'm wrong. Yeah. It was the case, but it wasn't the case. People didn't leave and they could leave at any time they wanted as long as if they came in with the wife and children they had to leave with the wife and children they couldn't just dump them in there although some did but that's yeah. by the by um but things like that i just i want to know the whys i want to know it's i don't tend to i do come up with historical theories but the, it's normally a case of how things are linked and finding yeah. that link, like you're saying about the hall and the church and yeah, and Newstead. It's finding what that link is because yeah, I'm pretty damn sure there is a link, but I need to find oh, what that link is yeah, and prove it. it. Uh, and, the name, um, you know, it it has to be, you know, the name and you know when you hmm. read about who's been interned here and there are links to hmm. Newstead and everything and well, one yeah, of them was when I wrote the Bosworth Hall book. There I, was one I, I, of, I still got to get that book. I need to get that from you, Paramit. I'll make yeah. sure I bring some to the Paramit. I need it, um, yeah. I, there was one of the baronets who had, he, there's nothing written about him. Nothing. He's literally okay. just a name. Now, he was a POW in the Napoleonic Wars. So he was he was actually a, a, the, the baronet of uh, Baronet Dixie. And he was only, a, I think he, I think he, when he was released, he only survived six weeks and then he died. And it's like, well, why is there not more written about him? He was a POW, surely he was a war hero. Why is there not? And I, I decided that I was going to find out some information about him. And even the historical society in Bosworth was like, you won't find anything. Nobody's ever found anything. And I'm just like, what is this place? Now, yeah. And I found stuff. And now it's a theory as to why nobody wanted to talk about him which I won't spoil for people who haven't read the book. It's a theory, but having spoken to Napoleonic historians, they actually think it's quite a good theory. Um, so, and I did actually pass the information on to the Historical Society and they were like, I've never found any of this before. Well, and they agreed with me, you can't dispute what I found. So that's more the kind of thing I want to solve. Like, why yeah. does he not talk about? Why does everyone shun him away? Um, so it's things like that that I really enjoy and it, it did mean I had to know some even though the 1700s isn't my forte I had I, I had I knew that for example because they were so desperate for sailors during the Napoleonic Wars if you were in prison for a minor crime so like gambling debts oh, stealing okay. whatever you could say all right I'll go and serve on one of those ships if you clear my record oh, wow. okay, yeah. and I can't remember what it was called there was an act back in like 1750 something I think yeah. um and 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 I remembered that and then when looking into what had happened to him <laughs> that made sense that's what happened to him and and oh it, it was all sort of things like that and it all just it fell into place but like I say it's the whole thing about doing history is you're not on your own there are so many people out there who are more than willing to sort of say actually yes you're on the right track there or that's or really, have you tried yeah. this or and it's just about having the confidence to actually that's the thing with me that took me ages to have the confidence to ask like other professional or yeah. other experts for want of a better word yeah am i going completely start raving bonkers thinking this and 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 having the confidence to know that i could talk to them on their level and not look stupid oh yeah it's the guy i've interviewed on here and i was so scared well because he was so academic and mm. yeah you might even guess who he is but you know, who you just don't want to ask a really silly question. And yeah. it's mad, isn't it? Yeah, but I feel like that when I talk to Kate Sherrill. She's so clever. I mean, she's like a PhD. I think she's studying a second master's or something. Oh, my gosh. And yeah. I'm, just, I'm just like, I feel so stupid when I talk to you. And she went, yeah, but I ask you questions. Oh, yeah, well, sure, actually, you do. True. So, you know, even I think, I think since I started doing this seven, eight years ago, I have met so many different people now. So I, I know quite a lot of very highbrow academics. 
but I also know people like myself who are self-taught yeah. and everything in between. And I think it's only certain academics now that I get a bit sort of starstruck by, and that's more because <laughs> I kind of like when I met Dan Jones, I was a bit like, ah! <laughs> but it, he was lovely. And, and um, Susanna Lipscomb is another one of my heroes. And I got to chat to her on Twitter about something. Again, absolutely lovely. Yeah. So uh, I think most of them, um, it's the same with a lot of the luminaries in the paranormal field. I find most of them are so giving yeah. with their experiences and their knowledge and everything else so, yeah. because it's a team effort. Definitely. Yeah, mm. it's just nice to run theories by people as well, isn't it? Mm. You know, and just see how they work, how what they think, and then yeah, yeah, because sometimes you might have a theory and they'll go, yeah, and we agree, and like yeah, yeah, it's just fascinating, isn't it? It is, it is, and it's having the confidence to to do that and to actually, um, you know, I don't, I think when when I've done my day job and I used to be a trainer sort of training people on pensions and investments oh, and wow. say, oh I've got a really stupid question and I was like I know it's a cliche but there's no such thing as a stupid no, question that's right. now the only thing I'll get annoyed about is I've just told you about it and you you ask me because you weren't listening I'm yeah. right. but if you didn't really understand that's fine um yeah, so you. um no I think having the confidence to run things past people is 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 a good thing it's something yeah. that I think we should all do more in this field. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, you know, I've spoken to some credit people, including yourself, and, you know, everyone's human, and it's just mm -hmm. great, you know, just to be able to talk to people, hear the stories, and that's it, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah, it's really, it's, um, it is, it's, 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 there, I think there's a lot less bitchiness in this world than there was a while ago. I think it seems to be getting a bit nicer well, I don't again. Know. <laughs> we just oh, had a conversation about... with someone, but yeah. <laughs> compared to three or four years ago, I think it's it's uh, it doesn't seem as I think I think thinks a lot of the troublemakers have vanished for a while. Oh, I um, know, just either that or I've blocked them on Facebook and I don't see them anymore. Fair, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> but, yeah. Or maybe it's just I've blocked them on Facebook so oh, I don't yeah. see their yeah. their rubbish. Yeah, and sort of, uh, if that person's, well, I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> I just try and be nice to everyone. I just try and be nice to everyone. I do try to, yeah. I, I really try, and it it just kind of goes wrong, doesn't it, really? So I'm so, just reading uh, a comment from Carl. Well, I'll put that one up then. So he's yep, got we... a pub called Black Horse Dick Turpin is said to have stayed there. We have a bridge called Turpin's Bridge. The pub we have was built on another in the bridges from the 20s. We have records of a highwayman, but the big question is, why would Turpin go 72 miles out of his way? Um, Whereabouts so are we talking about here? We're talking Bolton Way, so we're talking... Bolton? Yeah. Mm, I've not, I've not, I've not yeah. heard of any links to the northwest. So it's talking like Smithles Hall, which we know is haunted. Yeah, As, um, highwayman called himself Turpin. Ah, so yeah, I would would, say rather it, than him going there, then someone just called himself that. Yeah, could have been, could yeah, have been. I mean, yeah. no, I've, I've not. I know. I mean, obviously, Turpin was arrested in York because he was he was um, executed at basically at yeah. York racetrack. Hi, Ryan. Um, it's my brother from another mother. That one. Oh, bless you. Yeah, Mr. Griffiths. Um, yeah. Yeah, Turpin was more um, uh, northeast. Obviously, that side of yeah, things. That's um, it. I mean, I'm fr I'm in Essex, and obviously, he was quite prolific in yeah. Essex and North London. Um, but no, I don't believe. I th I, the thing is, though, I think it's a bit like um, when everyone seems to have seen a version of the ghost of Anne Boleyn. There's certain people whose names see everyone assumes that's who it is because yeah. that's a famous name rather than looking into the and the Work thing is if it was Turpin it was the 1700s it would be very hard to to confirm unless they had the dates of when they think he stayed there and then you can look at well actually no on that day he was being arrested for this in I don't know Epping so yeah. it, it's um 
it's it's all about sort of not accepting things at face value and looking into what is the documented evidence That's and true. you know knowing full well that if on the 5th of april he was being arrested in epping and he's meant to have been in bolton on the 6th of april it's not it's actually not possible happen, mm. oh helena she loves um hiya uh she loves dick turpin drawn to him and seen him twice but never seen his face keeps the mask on one of his gangs relate to Alex. Wow. Uh, I yeah, Dick Turpin is he he was not a nice man. <laughs> um, he wasn't the worst in that gang. I can tell you that from the research oh, wow. I have done. What he he um he one of the gang and I can't remember his name now. He's the leader. My mind's just gone blank. So obviously I didn't know that's what we were gonna be that's talking your next about. Book, then. Yay. <laughs> I've got three ready to start writing oh, I'm, 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 I'm about two years ahead of myself with books it's only taken um, me three years <laughs> <laughs> no i only i normally write one a year so but yeah. i've got the, about the next three years of yeah. ideas oh, lined dick up. Turpin, cause i'm doing an investigation on the anniversary of the death of dick turpin i'm doing mm -hmm. it at the castle museum in york so I'm really oh, looking forward wow. to that which I is love that place. and i'm staying in one of the haunted pubs in york as well it's like oh, oh my gosh so, no, yeah, I love really I love that place. That. I love York yeah. anyway, but yeah, the Castle Museum. I always go there whenever I go up to North Yorkshire. But um, what was I going to say? Yeah, there was one of Turpin's gang. He did actually rape the maid of the house oh that they gosh. were burgling because he wasn't actually a um, he wasn't a highwayman for very long at all. He was actually um, um, what do they call them? Like housebreaking type person. That's what his gang did. They broke oh. into houses. That that was their mo. He was only a highwayman for an incredibly short time, and he did oh. use Epping Forest a lot. And he's meant to have had a hideout in Epping Forest that his wife would deliver food to. It's meant to yeah. be in a cave, but nobody knows officially where that is anymore because it's been built over. Oh, way! That's a mm. shame. And it went sort of history like that does go. And mm. well, we we don't know what's under the ground, do we? Just like Richard the Third. Oh, bless you, Helen. Thanks for that comment. I'm so proud. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't being I wasn't meaning to upset you or anything Helen I was just, it's, it's a bit like I mean it, it, it seems a shame I always think it's a shame that characters like Dick Turpin uh Jack the Ripper all of those seem to be sort of idolized oh shut up Reynolds seem to be <laughs> idolized <laughs> um seem to be idolized but they were horrible people. Why don't we? Yeah. This is a good question, actually, for people listening. Why don't we idolise the nice people? Why don't we? You know, it's, it, I think it was when Hallie Rubinold wrote her book about the five, about Ripper, the Ripper's five victims. We know more about what who we think the Ripper is yeah. than about his victims, yeah. and it's almost like we just assume they were prostitutes. But her book actually goes into well, actually, there's no definite proof they were habitual prostitutes. Wow. That you know, and and it's 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 a good point. Why are we always drawn to the bad people? Why yeah, don't we look into their true. victims and talk about them in a positive light? Um, yeah. Because sometimes is it just because they're what we call normal people? They're just doing a day job, so they go to work, they go home, and they have tea. That's it. That's their life. I and the fact know. that you know something happened to them, what sort of changed the course of history for their mm. lives? You know that forever people will know who they are and things mm -hmm. like that but whereas it's somebody who's been notorious it's like what gets a mind like that you know is it the other thing the other thing though to bear in mind how they change or whatever the other thing to bear in mind is though most of these people we look up to like the ripper like turpin all men oh. a lot of their victims are women correct and and this was it's quite misogynistic and 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 this was something to uh that when i did this i was on this lecture from susanna this is one of the things she was saying about is is giving women a voice which is why when i do help my house is haunted when i come across a case that's a woman that nobody will have heard of she won't have done anything massive for history but her story comes through yeah. i think it's great because it 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 remembers that person who otherwise history wouldn't remember right, yeah. so i mean it's, it's like one of the one of the things i'll say to people is who can name the five jack the ripper victims who can name them oh god i'm rubbish at names so i can't but but the th that's the, the point I, I, yeah but i've heard i've heard the names 
mm-hmm. I've been to a lecture, Russell mm-hmm. Edwards, you know, I've been there when he's mentioned them. Yeah. And pff, I'm just, Shocking I can't remember them at the top of no. the top of my head right now, but like I say, I have a thousand years of history to try and remember, and oh, I can't gosh. always remember all the imagery. I know where to find it. I know yeah. the there is there, <laughs> but it's it's things like that that I I like giving people a voice or 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 yeah. a memory that hadn't got one before because I think they deserve it. Goes well, bless you. See you, Lynn. Thank you. Yeah, I think yeah. they deserve it. Um, yeah, it, it is true. You know, they lost their life, and it, you shouldn't want to know about them. It's right, isn't it? What Helen has just said—that he never Turpin never freaks her out. I think that's who she's talking about. Yeah, he, he wouldn't. He he actually wasn't. Um, he wasn't aggressive towards women. Really, right. he he he. Like I say, he wasn't one of the ones who was abusive towards women. Some of the one yeah. of the gang did. If he'd done it once, I would have thought he'd done it before. Right? Well, yeah, like a, fem- a victim. Yeah. Turp. I mean, Turpin was married. Um, wow. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, there's some amazing stories about him. That if they're true, they because because so I say because obviously my part of the world is is where he was from, and um, yeah, it's. Uh, um, I no, I I genuinely don't believe the Ripper was female. <laughs> Oh, I don't think. The... Oh, here we go. Thank you, Helena. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I know. We, we always have a. Hello, Rachel. We always have a clever one, don't we? <laughs> yes, yeah, smart ass. She's been very clever tonight. You win the prize. Thank you. Thank you. I knew there were lots of Marys. I know that. I knew that much. A bit uh, like with. Uh... Yeah, Catherine Eddowes. That's um, the, the shawl, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, supposedly. I don't believe that yeah. either. Personally, um, it I've seen beautiful. it. I have seen it. Yeah, a carpenter. I don't know. There's a couple of people I think it could have been, but we're not talking about Jack the Ripper. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing wrong with being a geek, Helena. I am proud to be a history geek. Um, and I probably could have thought the names if I wasn't actually talking and thinking about what I'm talking about next. I can recite oh, them. Oh, yeah, that's remember. right. couldn't remember them off the top of my <laughs> head right now. Um, but it's, yeah, I, I think it's the fact that we, we tend to focus on the people that we've heard of, the names, yeah. the famous names, rather than looking into the, the more sort of supporting characters yeah. of the play. And, and I always think it's interesting to look at the supporting ones rather than the headliners yeah. because the supporting ones have some quite interesting stories to tell. What do you win for being a smart ass? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Chance to investigate with me sometime, Helena, when you get round to booking. <laughs> but yeah. Um oh I've just totally lost it now. But yeah, you did the um the the girls the the haunted antiques one you did. Yes. Uh, the Spitfire Girls. That was fascinating. Yeah. Like once Thank again, you. you're picking on feet. You know, you're mentioning females. Mm. Like people don't know about that, and you're mm. sort of taking the females and what they actually did for the war effort. But that, <laughs> the other part, the other part of that talk was more to do with who the ATA were, the air yeah, transport that's auxiliary. That's right. Because yeah. the thing is, because the women were so unique, what they did and what they did was amazing. People forget yeah. there were men doing it, and they were men that were in the minorities doing it. So the fact you had um, one of the pilots only had one arm and one eye because oh in World War God. One he'd blown himself up with the, when he was trying to drop a grenade or bomb thing out of his aircraft. He was flying those aeroplanes as well. You had um, I think there was an Indian prince was one of the ones who flew. There were wow. there were men who were too old and I mean the the, the nickname for the ATA was Ancient and Tattered Airmen. But <laughs> um you know that that's that was also part of the talk. But the reason I focused on the the female side is I'd found out that a friend of mine, her great aunt, I think it was, was one of the original pilots. And oh, wow. I've always been because I love aeroplanes. I've I've been going up in aeroplanes since I was knee high to a grasshopper. Um yeah they fascinated me because they really really were pioneers and and i mean a couple of them should have been proper combat pilots they were such like lettuce curtis is the name that and jackie mogridge is another one they were such talented pilots um yeah yeah barda did but you you won't get me compliment i can't stand douglas barda 
he he <laughs> lost his legs because he was showboating. And oh, okay, yeah. He was he was doing aerobatics and showboating, and he lost it. He lost control of the aeroplane. I mean, okay. the fact yes, he, right. yeah, the fact he did fly with prosthetics is pretty impressive. But yeah, he wasn't a nice person. Well, it's kind um, of self inflicted in a way, then, wasn't it? Just mm -hmm. a bit too clever, you know. Yeah. yeah, but you know, but the point was, you had an awful lot of people who were too old to be in the RAF, but were still incredibly talented pilots. Yeah, literally at times flying by the seat of their pants. I mean, they wouldn't just be ferrying brand new aircraft; they'd also be ferrying aircraft. Thank you, Helena. That's yeah. He shouldn't have been showing off. They were also ferrying aircraft that had been damaged. And I, I remember reading the book. I think it was Spitfire Girls. One of them was describing the aeroplane that she was flying. I think it was a Spitfire. The undercarriage had been blown off. So she's oh flying gosh. with no undercarriage, which is, for those who don't know, that's the bit underneath well, the aeroplane. Yeah. 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 She could actually see the cables from the pedals because oh there was nothing gosh. covering them. Oh and she had to bring that aeroplane in and land. <sighs> Helena, you and I, we should be best friends because that is exactly how I feel about Barda. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, he made an awful lot of trouble as well because he he wasn't part of the leading fighter wing during. Well, I I'll, I won't get into this. But, oh, yeah. that didn't go down well, did it? With him, there. yeah. No, he he was. Um, I hit his ego a bit then. He was Lee Mallory, not. Um, oh hell, can't remember the other guy's name. <laughs> That's just gone from out my memory. But, anyway, but you again, remember so much of this, don't you? I wasn't I wasn't expecting us to be talking no. about this. Um, but yeah, but yeah, the Spitfire girls, they, they were yeah. amazing. Um, <laughs> he was an arse hat, yes. Um, but yeah, he, he the, these women, they, they, I mean, they were flying um, without instrument training. So if they flew into the, to thick cloud where they couldn't use what they call dead reckoning, where you're, you're using looking at down to see where you are, yeah. like to follow a river or whatever. They yeah. weren't trained to fly on instruments. They had no radios. They had no weapons. What? They were flying blind. And the fact that not more of them died, the heart, not many of I can't remember what the statistics were, not many of them died. But you had one, uh, Diana Bonato Walker. She kind of faked her way in. She didn't have enough flying hours, but she kind of flagged her way in. And she got caught in bad weather. But her fiancé was a fighter pilot and had taught her how to fly in instruments. Oh so she gosh. she was able to get out of it all safely because he taught her how to fly an instrument. And But there was they didn't even have their own uniforms. They had to pay for their own uniforms at the beginning of it. They, they were, and they were expected to fly in skirts and oh, all this man. kind of yeah, it was, but, rubbish. Yeah, but it was, wasn't it? You know, you had to wear skirts, even like when we went to school. But he did, he, you they know, did. Um, everyone had to ask it, it's ridiculous. They did, uh, I can't think what their, their like commander in chief, her name was, it's gone out of my mind. But she actually campaigned for them to be allowed to wear trousers when they were flying yeah. because it was easier for them. But oh, there, there's true. little things like that that you just, I mean, the, a lot of these women were expert pilots. I mean, my, my friend's great aunt, I think she was the first ever woman to hold a flying instructor's qualification. Wow. Yeah. So, the, these women were amazing. Um, I think it's the way kind of... she's fought to do that as well. Yeah. You know, it's not not just getting that license, but yeah. fighting to be allowed to do it and everything. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're amazing. They they were amazing. But all of the pilots who flew for the ATA, they were you know some they were disabled. They were older. Um, yeah. They were you know former. Um, Royal Flying Corps from the World War One World War One pilots who were injured, you know, they were ones who were incredibly talented pilots, but because they didn't fit the stereotype of what the RAF were wanting, they weren't allowed to fly in combat. So they flew for the ATA instead. And without them, this is what a lot of people don't realise with the ATA is without those pilots, the aircraft wouldn't have got from the factories to the airfields. Mm. And you know, a lot of time they had pilots ready to get into the aircraft um but they didn't have aircraft because the aircraft took you know the pilots could parachute out hopefully be ready to fly again but they needed the aircraft well either they took ref pilots off active duty to ferry them or 
they got someone else in to do it. And so, yeah, the, the ATA, it's, um, there is actually quite a lot of stuff out there about the ladies, if you look for it, is the honest answer. Um, but you have to look for it. Yeah, it's not, it's not going to be the main thing in books, is it? It's all about no. certain male heroes. Hey, Ashman, so. that's my Yorkshire girl. She's coming to America and Canada with me in May. Oh, <laughs> Have a great time. Oh, but yeah, the ATA, it's, I mean, I, I don't know, I might I might roll that presentation out again at one of the para meets, you never know. Yeah, it was a good one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. And Thank you. Yeah, I think when when it's sort of the history side of things, what you never thought of, and mm. that's what makes it more special mm. you know oh, well that's what i like to talk about is the stuff that people yeah. don't expect me to right. being yeah. yeah i'm she's just put i'm she's being dragged she is not being dragged she is not <laughs> kicking or screaming yeah yeah um <laughs> yeah the, the, well there was one of the aircraft that went down it had a um it did have a couple of nurses on board who were getting a ferry ferry aircraft to somewhere else um so yeah there, there's so many stories i mean when you start looking into like the world war one medical staff and the nurses who were in the field hospitals and stuff they actually dealt with and experienced as well um it's all it's never ending and that's what you i know about it You've actually just reminded me, like, I know when we're at Haunted Antiques and you're doing the talk, I did mention uh, my ex's grandmother. Mm -hmm. She was parachuted into France to help with the mm -hmm. resistance. Yeah. I've now remembered that she was actually a nurse. So mm -hmm. that's, that's the reason she was there. And, you know, I never thought about it until now that, yeah, it's because she was a nurse. That's why, you know, she's on the ground helping the war effort. And Well, I met a client once in my day job. This is about 20 years ago. And his mum had just died and she'd had dementia before she died. So they did, they knew she'd done something in World yeah. War II, but they never knew what. Well, when much. they were going through her possessions, they found a death head ring, you know, the, the Gestapo SS death head oh ring. Gosh. And they started digging into it and it found out she was, she was SOE and she'd been in France as SOE and had actually helped kill a Gestapo oh, wow. soldier and taking his ring as a souvenir. And I mean, he's like, I wish I'd known this when she was alive. I, I, but yeah. she never, ever mentioned it. I didn't. And, and None of them did. I mean, what Carl's just said then about them, that actually started World War One. It was World War One that the women took over the jobs. Um, yeah, that's right. It's yeah. It, they, it, they took over the jobs then. They were in the music and, and everything, weren't they? You mm, know, they were just yeah, doing the canary girls. The yeah, but they, they were driving yeah. the buses. They they worked as a police force. They did all what the men would have been doing. But when the men came back, they were told to step back down. But it was after World War Two that they were like, "We're not stepping down again. We quite like this." So yeah. I'm, I mean, that's I'm simplifying that quite a bit. Yeah, you know, it a bit did more to it than that. Well, but, yeah. But yeah. yeah, it was World War One that the women started taking on the men's roles. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's yeah, um, and history is made out. To, there are romantic, beautiful bits of history, but an awful lot of it is. I always say to people, if you're into horror films, just look into history because I guarantee you there's stuff that oh, really genuinely yeah. happened that's worse than any horror film you can ever picture. Yeah, well, I've um, spent um, the last three, well, three, three weekends I spent a night at Top Bray. You know, three three consecutive weekends and the stuff we're picking up there mm. i spent a lot of time in the dungeon stroke torture chamber and oh gosh mm. yeah it's yeah. you know and oh history can be horrible can't it mm. in, i can you know can. um but it's so, learning it's learning it and and understanding it and yeah yeah Mm. and seeing okay. parallels as well which is the scary thing because uh, I was actually thinking of one today while I was working on my talk for the Scary Southwest conference in March I was thinking of a parallel between Richard III and um, our current royal family so I was like oh that actually does work if I use that as an analogy oh mm. yeah it's going a bit of a mess isn't it at the moment yeah well, to, talking about Charles, Andrew, at, well, Charles and Andrew and Edward and comparing them to Edward, George, Richard and their sister. And, and it actually, when I started thinking about it as an analogy to use, it actually works. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> I'm going to end up in the tower. I'm going to end up in the tower. <laughs> yes. At least things aren't as bad as that anymore with the tower. 
I think a lot of us would be in the tower, really. Like every time we've like a lot of people spoke about this and that, which yeah, you'd be in the tower if you caught. But now Yes. Yes, they would have been. Oh wow. They yeah. would have been tea ladies. I can't remember what they called them. My mind's just gone blank, but yes, they would have been they they would have been preparing tea and stuff, yes. They would also have been women building the aircraft. Yeah. Don't forget that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, wow, that's amazing. But, you, wow, you've got such a bit busy year ahead. Yes. You've got so many conferences, parameets. Brilliant, that's isn't it? Brilliant. Yeah, awesome. So how many times are you at the parameet? All three at the You're moment. Three. As far as I'm aware, awesome. I'm, I won't be there for, like, the whole weekend then, right, like I was right, for yeah. the last one, because with three right. going on, I just can't can't do it but no oh, yeah. i will be there for the day when i i think the south one i'm talking on the sunday hinkley right. i'm talking on the saturday and then uh pontefract i'm talking on the sunday so i'll be there for those yeah those days around at some point um but yeah so i'm at i'm at all three that's cool because it's part of a saturday night at hinkley yeah i won't i won't be staying for be that. That. i'll, be, I'll, I'll yeah. be coming i'll be coming yeah back home with it's it's yeah, getting it's to the stage traveling, isn't it yeah. it is the traveling but it's also the, the fact i'm getting so much on which is great I, I kind of have to um yeah use my time and because i've still got a husband and kids so i kind of yeah, have to spend right. a little bit of time with them Pushed you know they kind yeah. they kind of expect it. well yeah you know family does does take priority you know, I might be bringing I might be bringing the older son to one of the events. I have oh, promised brilliant. him I'll bring him, so he'll be like a oh, deer in headlights when people start speaking to him. He'll be like, oh. Oh. <laughs> awesome! Yeah, you know, like me trying to arrange the dog, you know, and kennels for him, and mm. like I'm a, I think I'm away four or five weekends this year already, and like you know, like I haven't got much chance to do any more. <laughs> And yeah, I just no, want to try and get to Romania, but that's not going to happen. I've got five. I've got five paracons booked in for this year wow. at the moment. I'm um, next month. I'm down in Bude doing the Scary Southwest, and I must admit, I'm still blown away by the lineup that I'm on the same lineup as. Because you know, I'm, I'm I'm on the same lineup as Jane Harris, Kate Sherrill, and Karen Besant, and I'm yeah. just like. How did this happen? Uh, I, they're uh, awesome, though. You yeah, but how did that? How, how did I end up on the same lineup as them? Because you're good. It's, That's why. Inferiority yeah. complex. Don't worry. Um, oh, and then I've now? got. You're amazing. I've got the three paramates, and then obviously the the festival of the unexplained in September. That I'll I'll be doing the history tour history tour out on the Friday like last year. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if I'm doing a talk on the weekend yet but i'll be there for the whole event for anyone who's who's going there so yeah it's um and then i've just <laughs> been booked to do a talk for portals to the paranormal in december at Kelvin oh, Hatch, and then an investigation yeah. which i'll be part of with people they are as well as well yeah, Nando, Nando, and, Nando came on at the beginning of Saturday. Yeah, so you did, yeah. They're a nice bunch, and I, I know I know the hatch quite well, and it's only twenty minutes up the road from me, so oh, it's nice. it's that's yeah, better. I quite like that. Yeah, <laughs> not too much travelling. This is it, you know, with this like so many fantastic locations and the traffic, mm. you know, mm. like I do restrict it to an hour travelling at night mm. because I'm going to drive back. Yeah, uh, I do. I tend to say two hour. hours if if it's more than two hours, and I'll book a hotel, and that's what makes yeah. me decide whether I'm going to do it or not. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I do. Um, yeah, the traveling, especially when you're. Oh, shut up, Dennis! Um, <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what's going on there. <laughs> he reckons I don't talk properly, and he can't understand me. I, I want to put the captions on to see what it says, <laughs> just so I can have a laugh. Bear yeah. in mind, he's 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 from. He, well, I was going to say he's a brummy because that would yeah, really annoy him if I call, call him a him brummy. A brummy. <laughs> yeah, I call him a brummy. <laughs> he calls me the Cockney. <laughs> um, and he, no, it's, it's it's a bit of a standing joke because. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I'm Essex too. Born and bred, happy and proud to be Essex. No, Dennis, it's a standing joke. He always says he can't understand me. 
um, yes. because I don't talk <laughs> properly. <laughs> Is it, is it, yeah, he, he said when that the most recent help episode, the Jodie Kid one came out, he did actually put where are the captions. So, you know, <laughs> awesome. oh, he great. thinks he's funny. I try not I try not to encourage him, really. But, you know, <laughs> uh, it's men, you know, I love words, Wednesday, so. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, the, the thing is, because I've been around for so long now, I've got these kind of like jokes with with people, and um, yeah. so yeah, when <sighs> they're all starting <laughs> on me now. Oh, there you go. I'm ignoring them. <laughs> Chelmsford. Well, we Chelmsford. Chelmsford. Right. Um. <laughs> no, just, I. I it started. That's it. Dennis has just done it, hasn't he? Really. Mm hmm. We I get used so to it. Well. With, I get used to it with these lot. Um, yeah. I'll get my own back on them when I see them at a paracon. I'll pull them out in front of everyone. That kind of thing. Yeah, just up the road from me then. <laughs> Baz, Baz Vegas. Um, yeah, I'll pull them. I'll embarrass them when they're in the audience. Yay. I get my own back. Oh yeah, that's the way, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just you know, it's it's brilliant and. Do you do a different talk for each one or? For the parameets, I haven't decided yet. I am <clears throat> I am writing a new talk for the first one because a lot of people after the last year said, oh, we hoped you were going to talk workhouses again. So I'm writing a, a new workhouse talk, which is actually looking more at, and I haven't finished it yet, so I can't really tell. I'm not being secretive. I just don't, It's going to look more at the individuals who were in a workhouse and follow a few of them, what happened to them, and and all that kind of thing so it, it's going to it's looking it, i'm focusing on chelmsford workhouse because obviously that's my local yeah, one and it's all awesome. yeah. i can i can i can get to see the archives for that one quite easily oh, yeah. um so i can do really good research and and it's got some interesting stories so um but yeah it's looking more at rather than generically about workhouses is it's some it's of the specific, people yeah. Um, which I like to do. I like to give people an identity who, yeah. like I say, otherwise history's forgotten. Yeah, it brings life into a place like workhouse. Mm. You, you know, you've got the theory behind it and everything. And mm. but yeah, to bring a character in it and a personality makes mm. a whole age of difference. Um, like I did um, play and it's uh, three women at number 40. So it's basically women, um, someone from the 60s, someone from 70s, 80s. And mm -hmm. it was like a fifteen minute um fifteen minute chat from in character. So I was a sixties girl. My sister saw it, she says, Well, why don't they roll that into schools? Because mm -hmm. they kind of find out more from that about how yeah. life was than reading through this textbook which doesn't come to life. But mm -hmm. to actually hear a character saying how hard it was, you mm -hmm. know, as well, I think she had a baby. And she mm -hmm. went to work in the days that they didn't. And people just don't think about things like that, do they? You know, nowadays it's just so so much the norm. They, they, I think a lot of the younger generation don't realise what the other older generation have achieved to enable us to do That's what right, yeah. we do. I mean, when you look at women holding jobs back in <clears throat> up until, well, even during the First World War, if you were a nurse and you got married, you had to leave work. You weren't allowed to carry on working once you were married, wow. which is archaic. Yeah. So it's it's the women fighting that. And I don't know the history of the women who fought that for it to not happen anymore. But it's the fact yeah. that it did. The fact that um, there were two, two I can't remember the exact details of this. Somebody in the watching might know it. There was two female doctors who offered their services as World War One doctors and were told, no, because you're women basically so they set up their own volunteer hospital i can't remember where it was it was wow. abroad to, yeah. to help um so there's things like that that you know these 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 people hi mark these people need i think to be remembered and there are people out there talking about them um and i mean there's some brilliant historians out there talking about them but they're not tv historians so a lot of people won't have heard of them and yeah um, I won't notice yeah so it, it's 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 making people realize just who what but then again you know there's the fact there was you know I'm not being sexist on the women's side I used to go to school with a guy he was amazing with children he had two little brothers because his mum was quite young when she'd had him and when she had yeah. two children so when he was about 12 
are absolutely amazing with children. He wanted to work with children. He wanted to be a pediatric nurse. Back um, in the 80s, he you? was told, no yeah. way, it's not going to happen. Yeah. But can. now you can. Yeah, that's right. And, and I think it, it so it does, it, the, the, the sexism and the preconceptions and everything else, they do work both ways. And I, I do think, um, I, mean, I remember there was a book I wrote, read once. And it was one of my mums, and I don't think I should have read it. it was, I think it was called up the, up the Junction. And it was about a young girl in the 60s who got pregnant and had to have an illegal abortion, and it killed, nearly killed her. Wow. And and you sort of read stuff like that. I was about 13, 14, and I was like, oh, my God, did this used to really happen? And, and it, yes, it did. Um, you know, and, and it, it, I, I just... Anyone who says to me that history is boring and history hasn't got a part in the greater picture of things, they've not been with the right historian. They've no, been with right. the ones who just go, mark, mark, dates and figures, oh, dates and figures, gosh, dates and figures. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's, there's so much stuff that, that, and stuff that's in living memory as well. I mean, when COVID happened, I was saying to my husband, in 20 years' time or 30 years' time, our grandkids are going to say to us, do you remember COVID? Yeah. Do you remember the COVID epidemic? And and uh, you know, it's like we we are everything is history. Everything and and that's, yeah, well, that's, that's it. what we, I think we is part so cool. Of the pandemic and like yeah. you sort of hear about the Black Death and the oh the pandemics and things like oh wow Spanish flu Spanish flu in nineteen eighteen yeah that's um, it. part of it. Like I, I sort of write my book then and there's mm. a chapter where it's sort of like. I don't know what the future holds, no. you know, because at the time they're saying, oh, you'll never be able to go out and socialise, you'll never do this. Mm. And it was, you know. It was. It was. It was weird. You, I mean, you know, you like, know. if we went out, we'd die, basically. Yeah. And, yeah, we, we just didn't know, did we? And that was yeah. it. So. Yeah. I mean, it may, it may it's. It it, that it, way. But it's, it's one of those things that it is going to be something that, you know, my grandchildren will probably ask me if I remember. Like I used to ask yeah. my grandparents if they remembered World War Two, you know, and 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 I think, yeah, I I I just I don't know how we got onto that, but I I yeah. I just I just love the fact this is I I I've chosen something that I will never know it all, and I will never stop learning, because right. I start off with only being interested. I I started off with being interested in World War Two aeroplanes, that was oh, what wow. I loved, and then I kind of found something else. And then found something else. And then my mum made me read Birdsong, which fasc made me fascinated about World War One. So I had to go and learn about World War One. And, and you know, writing the Bosworth book, I had to learn about the Battle of Bosworth Field. Yeah. And so that made me start learning about the Plantagenets and thinking, oh, my God, they were, they're more interesting than the Tudors. And yeah. and it's kind of like, oh, I, and, and my husband's like, please don't take on another time period in history to get infatuated <laughs> with. Bless and I'm you. like, it, it doesn't stop. It really doesn't stop, and um, yeah, it's it's just yeah. it's just awesome, really. No, it's wonderful how you know you're so passionate about it, and and it it obviously it just grips, doesn't it? And then you just got to find mm -hmm. out more and more. And like when you think that Richard the Third is found under a car park in Leicester, mm -hmm. it, you know, and you don't know what's underneath us. No, nope. and all the time, like I keep showing things onto my page because I keep finding, yeah. you know, you might be in a house and they find a cellar to something. I was talking yep. to, I was on the works leaving do on Friday. Um, my friend's got a, she's got a, well, she's got a plot, vegetable plot, <laughs> and it's got stairs down to a bunker. Like, awesome. So, cool. yeah, I guess where I'm going in summer, you know, it's like, yeah, a little bunker. It's like, Proper built, wow. I'm like, yeah. So, I'm going, yeah, it's not big, but my gosh, I'm going there investigating, and I can't oh, wait. Yeah. Can I come too? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that sounds just, very cool. Yeah, I know. It's just like, yeah, it's amazing. And then the location of it is quite near a hospital as well. So, you know, you've got this as well. So, it's it's not just the wall, you've got a lot no. of other stuff happening around it. And no, it's, wow, it's, it's um, so fascinating. Yeah, it, it 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 really is never ending. And no, I haven't looked into the Borgias. Obviously, I've not heard of them. But um, yeah. like I say, I, at the moment, I've got enough side quests on. I I really think the husband uh, would kill me if I took like another it, one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but Dick Turpin's there now. <laughs> well, I mean, you're talking about sort of um, 
you don't know what's under your feet. The most recent podcast I released on haunted histories was to do with body snatchers. If any of you haven't listened to it, go and have a listen. It's really rather interesting. And you find and it on the haunted histories page. You can find it on the haunted histories page, or just and look I'll haunted try histories on Spotify. I will try and share it onto here anyway. I think so. I've shared it onto Paranormal Path because you always let yeah. me share my podcasts. Oh and gosh, stuff. definitely you need to. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. it's with somebody called Paul Bestel, who he does a podcast oh, yes. called History Rage. Right. Oh, Paul, Bav Paul Bavel, sorry, not Bestel, Paul Bavel, oh. who does History Rage. There's too many Paul okay. Bs. Yeah. Um, and we, he was saying that that the great that body snatching, thank you, Mark, um, body snatching was so bad in the 1800s. There was a program he was watching with um, Dr. Alice, the one who always has like red hair, leather jacket, very, very cool. Yeah. Can't she think what her surname is. No, if anyone knows know. in the audience, please put it yeah. in. I can't remember. Anyway, it, they were they were um, doing some digs, and they were finding all these empty coffins because a lot of London people don't realise when you're walking around London, you're actually walking over former graveyards. Oh wow! Nearly all of it, and uh, they were finding all these coffins that were empty that had obviously been snatched. Yeah. Nobody had ever realised because the successful body snatchers would come and go without anyone realising they'd been. Wow. And and that's what I mean. It's like oh, you could okay. be walking around a graveyard. Alice Roberts, thank you. Um, yes. And you, Dr. Alice Roberts, was she a professor? I'm not sure. Um, another brilliant one. Brilliant. Blows my mind. One of my heroes. Um, but, you know, it's saying you could be walking around a graveyard and thinking that there's a grave there from like 1840. And it might just be empty because it might have, been robbed and nobody will know the body might have been snatched nobody will know until they open it up which they may never do so it's it, things like that it does make you look at things it's slightly yeah, differently okay. yeah. it sort of says hmm. like my house i went to um, an investigation around the corner not far away and they said like i'm right near a church could see it from here and mm -hmm. they basically say like all the land around here was um, a saxon graveyard and we've actually got a Saxon cross mm -hmm. here as well. And, yeah, mm -hmm. it makes sense. But I'd love to know what's under my house. Mm. But, yeah. Yeah, but, no, the, the, bodies, the body snatching thing was, um, although I was, this is the only problem when you do what I do. I was watching a program the other night, and it was an American version of body snatch. It was a history program. They talked about grave robbers. And I was, I was actually yelling at the television, they're not grave robbers, they're body snatchers. There is a big, big difference. And yeah. I got made that mistake, and Paul corrected me and explained why grave robbers were not body snatchers and vice versa. So yeah. if you want to know why that is, listen to the podcast. But it does mean that when you listen to someone saying, oh, yeah, they were grave robbers taking the bodies. No, no, that's actually not grave robbing. That's body snatching. Yeah. And the difference grave is grave... The jewellery, isn't it? And Yeah, grave robbing you could actually yeah. get hanged for because it's stealing, snatching a body and leaving all their belongings, morally wrong, but legally there's not a lot they can do. So it's a very, very important oh, wow. difference. And they um, I, belongings, then. Yeah, yeah. Oh. They, you need to listen to the podcast. Yeah, actually. I definitely, I definitely do. Yes. Oops. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, there, there was one. There was one of the most the prolific gangs in London. He did actually get um, transported to Australia, um, and um, that because he took some of the belongings off one of the bodies they snatched. So mm -hmm. no, if you just took the body, the, 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 or literally it was a slap on the wrist. I think they would get like two or three weeks hard labour and that was it. But oh, if you took God. the belongings, that was a different thing. So what? that was one of the rules. You never take the belongings. They had rules. Yeah, Helen is right. Yeah. She's put. It's, almost like, I, it's, it's, right. it's yeah. almost like I've teed her up for this, isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm, no. I'm, I'm a bit concerned she's after my job. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you no, know, she's completely correct. The body doesn't belong to anyone, but the belongings do. So you can't get done for thieving a body. It's a moral, moral issue as opposed to a criminal one. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, the podcast talks about that. So anyone who's not listened, you need to go and have a listen to it because it's it's one I'm I'm incredibly proud of, and um, oh, I will be appearing on Paul's podcast, History Rage, a bit later this year. That's fantastic. So, Although unfortunately, I, I didn't I didn't win the swearing award, which I was really disappointed about because he oh, said wow. I can swear as, and I found out that I didn't get anywhere close to winning the swearing oh, wow. award, which I was really disappointed about when I was raging about something. Oh, and I was shit. raging. 
I was raging, but but informationally raging. Yeah. <laughs> Bless you. All right. Um, so you've done a number of books. We've mentioned Bosworth. And uh, how many books in total then for everyone watching? Five. Hold on. My Haunted Histories, A Haunted Experiment, Paranormal Playtimes, Battle for Bosworth, Epping Forest, five. Yeah. So far. I'm working on the sixth at the moment. That's brilliant. <laughs> so you say you do about one a year, which, is, you know, it's it, incredible to do that. You know, I, I, this you're doing thing, everything else you're doing. <laughs> I then... find it quite cathartic, though. I, I actually, I mean... The one I'm writing at the moment is more, I, I have had an awful lot of people say, we want something that's more autobiographical from you, like your own experiences as opposed to writing about yeah. the other place. So the one I'm writing at the moment is more about where I've come from and things that have happened to me, personal things that have happened yeah. to me that I've never really written about before. So people can get, if they want to, get more of an insight into me. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I'm working on, I don't know when it'll be finished. I'm about two thirds of the way through the initial draft um but uh, yeah it's it's say yeah book number six is well underway how do you feel writing about you because that's what my book is and it's it's like oh gosh it... well one of it's one of the chapters that. one of the chapters does address me losing my sister when she was 19 and i was 22 yeah and I actually sent it to someone who I respect a lot, who's actually was in the audience. I don't know if she still is. And oh, she said, great. we need to see more of you. You need to talk more yeah. about you. And how, And because I'm so used to almost hiding it, um, yeah. I don't. Yeah. So it, it, I, I, I find it quite cathartic, but I also find it weird that anyone would want to know about me because yeah. I don't think I'm very interesting. Um, so it will be a bit of an experiment to see if anyone buys it. But yeah. it's, it, it was, even when I, I, if I like write fiction, I am the character, if that makes sense. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, envis yeah. envisaging me as the character, even though yeah. I'm not five foot eight, size 12, sort of, I don't know, Charlize Theron type character, but that's what yeah. I've written. Um, so... There's always a bit of me in everything I do, but yeah, writing about my own. I well, I'm kind of writing about my own personal experiences, but then doing some history in it because at the end of the day, that's what I'm known for. That so it'd be a shame. Are, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <Sorry. laughs> Essex girls unite. Um, <laughs> we've got to stick together. Um, so yeah, so it, I don't, I don't know. I, I, yeah. I, I do. I'm, I'm. I'm finding it, I'm finding, I'm ignoring him, uh, Mark. Um, I'm, I'm finding it quite interesting because I'm remembering things I'd forgotten as yeah, I write. Yeah, you do, that's right. Um, but, and it's not so much emotional writing about my late sister and all of that. It's it's more, it's just opening up. And it's actually yeah, quite therapeutic. It, it is quite yeah. therapeutic. Um, that's true. Yeah. So I don't know when that one will be finished. Like I say, yeah. I'm about two thirds of the way through the first draft. So cool. um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping I'll have had it, got it all sorted by the Festival of the Unexplained in September. So it'll be yeah. at that and then the October Paramete as yeah. well. But awesome. who yeah. knows what will come well, up? <laughs> well, you, you know, put it this way, you are so incredibly busy. So yeah. we've had the discussion. You've got a day job. You've got yeah. all the Paramete's, Paracons. So you've got the weekends <laughs> Also, you've been on a TV show. Once so or twice. Time, yeah. Well, that's taking time off as well, isn't it? It does, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that when I do, even though I'm only on screen for like five minutes for help, my house is wanted. Yeah, it's, that's it's a research probably a good everything, isn't it? Seven, eight hours worth of research per show, minimum. Um, yeah. But I like it. I yeah. enjoy research. It's my... That do, and lifting yeah. weights at the gym is what I find calms that's me right. down. That's, yeah, so, that's good. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I, I, I actually watched the Jodie Kidd episode, which is the newest one out on Discovery Plus. I actually watched it today. And oh, even yeah. I had I was had goosebumps. I actually texted Jane Harris and said, come on, mate, that can't really have happened. And she wrote back, she said, honestly, it really did. We really oh, did God. hear that name oh, yeah. said in real time. 
Oh, so um, it wasn't faked, any of it. So, because uh, I think people sort of think, oh, I know exactly what's going to happen. So I make sure I find the, the history that fits in with what's happening. I don't. I don't oh, right. get much direction oh, yeah. at all. And then um, it just comes through. That's brilliant. I'll find sort of three or four historical sort of stories for them. Um, and then, uh, it, it, you know, it's, for some reason, one of them, which is normally most out there story, hits. And that's how oh, it's been every episode I've done. That's um, <laughs> sorry, I'm reading the comments oh, as yeah, they're yeah. going through, and it's that's good. <laughs> it's like the parameter. Which one, Mark? <laughs> oh dear, he, he he's scared of me as Mark. He's terrified of me. Um, oh, let's get a photo of you together next time. Then. Well, you've got the one of me with my tongue in his ear at the last parameter. Do you not remember? Oh there was both, God, that, I did. That, that, yeah. I yeah, didn't actually contact. People think my tongue was actually in his ear. It really wasn't. <laughs> I did it at the last minute to make his lovely wife laugh. Because she funny. burst out laughing when she yeah. saw me do it. I'll have to but, I find that photo, yeah. There was it no, was with my phone and not my camera, yeah. <laughs> there was no contact. It was to make him them laugh. That really was the reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, with help, no, I don't get much direction. Um, yeah. It's like the one of my favourite episodes I've ever done for them was the Jake Quickenden one in Colchester, and all I got told was something Civil War. That's Civil War on witches uh, was all I got right, given as direction, okay. and and then to find out that an old farmhouse was on the site of where his brand new build house is, that in the 1930s they discovered a fake room that uh, with a loft hatch and when they prodded the loft hatch the body of a civil war soldier still in his armor fell down like a oh skeleton and that was exactly where jake's house is finding that i would that was one of my squealy moments at the computer because i was like that can't yeah. be right and i was triple checking it to make sure the location was right oh and because civil war wasn't one isn't one of my specialities at all but it meant that I learned about the siege of Colchester and then the Battle of Boxted Heath wow. and and I went and looked at the archives and to double check a few things that I wanted to make sure I was correct and yeah yeah wow that's so fascinating. so that that sort of that thing a does thing, isn't it and, but all you know, I got that... told was civil war and I knew that Boxted Heath had had something to do with the civil war because I'd heard of wow. the Battle of Boxted because yeah. I'm from Essex I'd heard of it yeah but I didn't quite know exactly what had happened. And and then to find out the whole backstory to the Siege oh of Colchester gosh. and then the Battle of Boxted Heath and the fact that his brand new build house was on the site of this old farmhouse, which they'd hidden in during that time. And um, the Cavalier soldiers had hidden in. Um, yeah, when you find that, and I don't, I didn't get given direction to find that out. Nobody yeah. knew that. It's um, incredible. So, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, the Jody Kid one. It was um, apparently the, the the pub was even more active than the TV show was able to show with the time that they had. Oh, so wow. and it was beautiful. I got to go in it. Uh, I when yeah. I got there because then we were early. I said, "Can I have a look around?" I didn't get to meet Jody, but I got to look around, and it is amazing. It is an amazing oh. place. Um, but there was lots of stories about that village that we could have featured. That they're quite for such a small place. There was so much history to it. It's brilliant. Is that mainly because of the Civil War then? What the oh, Jody Kitt? Yeah. Well, no, the, the villain, no, that, that, no Jody, Jody that Kitt's one was Cur is Curdford in. Um, All right. Sussex. Okay. Um, no, when I did the research for that episode, right, the one that's just yeah. been released, there was a lot of stories that I was oh, would wow. have been able to tell that were absolutely fascinating, but yeah. they 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 you know they 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 didn't fit with what was actually happening in the yeah, pub. Exactly, and you've only yeah. got 45 minutes as well, so well, yeah, they're, they're going to be selective. Yeah, but right. um, no, Boxted Heath, the, the Jake Quickenden one, the, there was some, there's a story about a witch who supposedly, because obviously um, Hopkins and Stern were from Essex and they'd called them in supposedly because this supposed woman who they said was a witch, I think it was a cow or something she'd caused to die, but the villagers took it upon themselves to execute her and they hanged her and she disappeared body just disappeared and that's one of the stories from there but there's no way of proving i couldn't find any no. i found that the woman's name she did genuinely exist but yeah. nothing that would denote that she was ex hanged for being a supposed witch um 
but Essex has got so many witch stories. We're we're witch country. We've got more witch stories than anywhere else. So yeah. it's kind of easy pickings there. But no, I it's it is it is busy when I do an episode, but um, it's fun and yeah, um, that's right. good. And 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 like I've said before, the crew both on and off camera for help are just so much fun to work with, and they're friends now. So. Yeah. Um, there's lots of hugs and how have you been doing? What have you been up to? Oh, so whenever yeah. we catch up, so it's nice. Yeah, yeah. But it, it certainly helps. Like when the chemistry is like that, you know, it hmm. it just helps make something more successful as well, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah. Jane so and I, Jane and I do have to be careful because sometimes we'll be cracking in jokes with each other and we'll be first out laughing and, <laughs> and, yeah. and things like that. But we do try and be professional when we're working. Yeah, um, that's right. <laughs> but no, they're, they're just such a cool crew to work with. And oh, that's it's, awesome. it's, it's a lot of fun. But I, I say, I I don't think I had any aspirations to be on telly, but apparently I'm quite good at it. So oh, um, I just just enjoy myself, really. That's and I, I have I have fun. I, it, I enjoy discovering yeah. this, these facts and then being able to pass them on to people and and making these people real again that yeah. society has forgotten yeah but you you've got the passion and mm. it, it's the way you tell these stories as well <laughs> you know, any, anyone could tell a story people can fall asleep like you know, gosh you know you get some history teachers who they just know <laughs> the topic of history don't they but you actually make things interesting but you also bring sort of the individual human aspect which yeah that makes it more that's what special. i'm interested in yeah. it's the social side it's the yeah, real that's side it. it's, yeah, it's that's rather it. than sort of um you know i i i don't particularly when i look at millet like world war ii history although i'm fascinated by airplanes and stuff because i love airplanes i'm actually not that interested in battle strategies or anything like that i'm interested on how did the woman with six kids trying to work on rations cope back home how did the um the oap whose son was his carer living in London, cope with the blitz. That's the kind of thing I'm I'm interested in. It's real, real people. Um, I mean, battles do, they are interesting. Like the, I, but the thing is, I'm not, when people think of battles, obviously you've got the D-Day, I think 80th anniversary coming up this year, oh, wow. which is fascinating. Yeah. But when I went to Normandy with the family, I was more interested in what happened once I got off the beach because the battle didn't end on the beach. That's true, yeah. Um, and you know you've got the battle of fillets you've got the battle of the bocage you've got all these other things that most people have never heard of yeah. that the beach was just one element of it all right it was the, a biggie but it was one element yeah. so i'm i'm kind of interested in how the people coped and what they did and um yeah everything yeah. else um uh, <laughs> you're already friends sorry. there you go <laughs> <laughs> it tells you how often I go on Facebook. You, you, you'll it? be chatting later now, then, won't you? <laughs> yeah, not so, tonight yeah. though, because I'm shattered. <laughs> but people don't know this isn't my my bedroom. I'm sat in a hotel room <laughs> near Bournemouth because uh, I've been doing my day job today. So um, yeah, I'm actually in a hotel, yeah. and, and and no disrespect to Jacqueline because I love talking to her. Once we're finished, I am oh, hitting that bed. Oh, bless yeah. You. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to bed. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's been I think the you know, driving and the long day and the whole package, isn't it, really? Yeah. And it is different when you're sort of staying away from home. It, mm. it, yeah, it is. But, yeah. Mm. Well, you've got night entertainment tonight, talking to me or not. But, yeah. Yeah, instead of going down the bar and just sitting there and having your meal on your own and all that jazz. Oh, no. I, 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 I went, there's a, I'm only in a travel lodge, but there was an Asda, so I went and got a salad from there. It was the most bland salad I'd ever had. Oh, so I'm, I'm, I kind of ate half of it, and I was like, oh, I'm not hungry mm. anymore. But the care home that I'd been working at today, they had hand, homemade cakes. So they oh, made me take some cakes, and my dinner was lemon juice ah, cake. cakes. Yeah. Oh, beautiful, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've uh, done some, I go and sort of do, we do a panto, so we put together something for mm. a local care home, and they love it, you know. And they've they've started feeding us, and oh my gosh! Oh, my care homes are a nightmare. Thought, yeah, my care homes are a nightmare for feeding me. And I was like, I really don't need feeding up, guys. And they're like, No, you've driven a long way to be here. You need sugar. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, Oh, okay. And you can't say no to them because it is delicious. So yeah. Um, yeah. 
every yeah, so... time we go, it's just getting worse. You know, at first they put on a few sandwiches, but now, oh my gosh, it's crazy. And they did this beautiful display of like cupcakes last time. And it's oh, that's like, not oh fair. my gosh, it's that's just getting fair. bad. But yeah. <laughs> So yeah, they're, they're trying to bribe us to go back, aren't they? <laughs> they just want you back. And you well, know, talking of, I mean, at, at last year's last year's festival of the Un, at last year's festival of the unexplained, there's this amazing bakers that come along that make these handmade cakes that are just pure diabetes. Oh, oh. And <laughs> and I'd said to them, you should make one called the Ghost Hunter Special with Haribo on it. Oh, so they did, oh. and it was very nice. Um, like I say. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's diabetes special but yeah. yeah so they made one and they were like here you go and I mean these things are like this big and like oh, this thick and, and absolutely and utterly blooming delicious but they yeah. made one based on my suggestion of using Harry oh bless her oh. <laughs> so yeah oh. yeah so yeah people <laughs> do seem to I mean I have got a sweet tooth but um but yeah my dinner tonight was was half a salad that was horrible and yeah. um lemon drizzle <laughs> awesome yeah <laughs> that is definitely a benefit of your job and uh, you know it's yeah well not really because then I, I have to go and sort of you go get to rid the of gym it. and have to sort yeah. it out don't you? <laughs> I mean I like going to the gym I like lifting weights but yeah. um it doesn't seem to to help oh um, bless you Oh, Mark knows the cakes I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. right. um, but yeah, going to the gym doesn't seem to help. I seem to be getting to that age where no matter what I do, it's spreading. Um, you know, I'm Ugh. lifting more than most of the 20 year old blokes in the gym, but I still can't keep it at bay. But anyway, um, embrace the spread, I think. Just be strong enough to throw someone over can, my shoulder if they annoy what me. Can I say, but yeah. <laughs> Hey, hey. <laughs> I can hold on to the dog if he runs. That's fine. That's fine. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm okay unless he just like sometimes I get scared of something. So you're okay yeah. walking. And then he might just jump in the wrong direction. That's when you go flying, isn't it? You know, if you're just about to step in, you're just off balance because he's just gone somewhere. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. just a bloke so, just doing something with his car and we just walked by the driveway the bloke sort of popped his head out and the dog like ran into the road from me behind him <laughs> well because my dog's only got he's thing. only got three legs he's oh, only got three legs so he wrong foots himself and i think the worst accident i had hi bear lovely to see you um i think one of the worst accidents i had was he he was about a year 18 months old and he, he doesn't he's not aggressive to other dogs but he loves them. He gets really oh. excited because he, because it being <laughs> yeah. a, a a rescue and everything oh. else, and being t found at three weeks old. So he wasn't with his mum, and there's loads oh, of social things. Good. But he's a very very friendly dog, and yeah. I was trying to lead him past his other dogs, and he was getting overly excited, and he wrong footed himself, and I was stepping off the curb, so I only had one foot down. Oh, he swiped oh. out my other leg, and I was sprawling into the road, and 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 did take quite a few chunks out of my arm and leg and stuff. And so, yeah, it wasn't malicious. It was just he wrong footed himself because he was getting overly excited. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm loving the banter in the comments, by the yeah. way. They're, they're sort of having their own little conversation. It's great. Uh, there you go. I just look and eat it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's our bear. Do you know? Do you know Bear? Have you no, met Bear before? No. Oh, Bear's lovely. She's absolutely a sweetheart. I've known. Gosh, it's about six or seven years now, isn't it, Bear? We've known each wow. other, something like that. Um, yeah, absolute, absolute sweetheart, absolute sweetheart. Um, I think you live by a giant lake, don't you, or something, Bear? Something like that. Um, yeah, over in the states. But um, yeah, I'm just like I'm just I'm I'm listening to you. I'm, I'm multitasking. Uh, it's just I'm like, looking at the yeah. comments. It's uh, fascinating fascinating stuff oh yeah helena you've got to come and sort of um say hello to penny <laughs> you won't be able to get away from talking to each other <laughs> <are you? Really? laughs> well i must yeah. admit when i met dan jones um i was nattering we were nattering away and his assistant goes we do have other people waiting to see you dan and i'm just like oh damn it and he, he's like a bit like oh damn it <laughs> um yeah we did say why don't you come for, <laughs> we go for pizza why don't you come with us and he's like, do you know what I would if I hadn't got to go home tonight? Because he lives in the Middlesex way. So, yeah, it gets, it does get like that. It does get like that. But oh, it's all good. It's all awesome. good. 
Sounds yeah, she, she lots of animals does our bear. She has this. I don't like birds. I'm scared of them. But she has this absolutely beautiful bird that's got like pink and grey feathers. Oh, um, wow. I'm sure she'll be able to tell you more about it. Um, but it's they're they're real personalities, real personalities. Her animals, but um, oh, yeah, no, bears bears wonderful. Bears wonderful. Um, oh, so are lots of people actually in that feed. Um, actually, wonderful people <laughs> who I've, I've got to I've got to meet over sort of know over yeah. the last seven eight years, and it's it's kind Certainly. of yeah feels like this is your life. Oh, it almost feels good. like this is your life at times when people start coming. <laughs> oh, bless you. No, that's nice, isn't it? But um, so for everyone watching, where'd you get your books from? Oh, African Grey. I love African Greys. Oh, they're stunning. But this one's got yeah. pink feathers, hasn't it, Bear? He. I think it's a he. Bear knows I'm scared of birds, but this one oh, is, wow. is very pretty. I wouldn't go near it. But it's very pretty oh, to look at on the camera screen. I'm a, a bit, bit dubious about parrots and things because my friend had one and um, he would bite a chunk out of your hand if you wanted I'm to. I'm just scared. I'm just it scared of birds. That sort of mood. No, I'm scared of them. Oh, I am you. scared of them. Yeah. Um, but any, yeah, where can they get my books? Um, either direct from me if they want to. Just send me a message, email um, haunted histories at virgin. Is it virginmedia.com? Um, or message me on Haunted Histories, the Facebook page. Or Is it end. Um, Haunted Histories? One word. Yeah. So you've got the website, hauntedhistories.co.uk. The email's on there if people want to contact me. Um, so, you've got the okay, Facebook page, there. Haunted Histories. It's a yeah. group, not a page. The Facebook group, because I like the interaction. Yeah. Um, or you can order them direct from Amazon if you don't want to get one signed directly from me. And then come and meet me at one of the Paracons that I'm doing and produce it and say, please right. sign it. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's um, cool. yeah, please sign my book if you want to, to. But yes, they're all available on Amazon that's or brilliant. directly from me. Oh, wow. I've never, never known that. Yeah, awesome. She does call him the toddler quite a lot in her videos. It's quite oh, funny. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I knew my mate since she got him and then he died. I was like, oh, my no. God. She had him about 30 plus years. It's like, yeah, they are awesome. I've got paranormal playtime. Have you? Yeah, uh, yeah I got that at the Paramium. Did you? I can't remember. Uh, oh. if, it, if it happened more than two yeah. days ago at the moment. Well, I, I don't know. I, I've got it. <laughs> I don't know when, but yeah, I wanted the um, the Bosworth one. I meant to get yeah. that and get around to getting it. But well, yeah. that one sold out when I was at the Festival of the Unexplained. Ah, okay. That sold out. I thought Epping Forest would because that was the new one, and I got I got quite low on that one as well. Hi, Wes. Um, hey. But poor sod, he's he's going to be with me and Rachel for our trip. Oh wow! Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I meant to meet up with uh, Wes in Edinburgh, but um, it's 2020, so we couldn't go for some reason. I wonder why. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was when I was yeah. originally supposed to go to Canada in May 2020. And oh, obviously, okay. there was a, I had to be, yeah. it's taken me that long to sort of get my finances back up so I can I can go. Oh, um, but yeah, I thought Epping Forest would sell out. No, Bosworth sold out at. Um, yeah. The festival of the unexplained so but then um, it was that possible wasn't that mm. so there you go yeah. that's why <laughs> but no but a lot of people because they'd come the year before a lot of them got a free oh, copy the year before oh, okay. so i didn't realize it was oh, um, new people yeah i don't know helena if wes is being dragged he's offered to come with us so i think he's actually uh, quite looking forward to the fact he's it, we've we have met before but he's also going to have the yorkshire one with him so um Oh, yeah, okay. poor guy. Poor guy's going to go into therapy when we fly back. Oh, wow. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah, big good trip. Um, would love to meet Wes. I think we've nearly met up three times. One day we'll get there, you know. But... I'm sure next time he comes <laughs> over, we'll sort something out. I think I'll, oh, I might have to be in charge of his um, meet and greets next oh, time wow. he comes to the yeah. UK. Um, I don't think I mean I, I I met him Wes and I first met we both did um Bob in jail for Richard okay, Estelle yeah, yeah. and Wes was staying in the same hotel as me and so Richard had said oh would you mind giving him a lift up to the jail 
and okay. we just sort of became firm friends yeah. as a result of that so um that's what's so lovely about all of this it's it's the people isn't it just yeah, yeah. Really makes a difference. I don't know if they feel the same way about me. Uh, but don't tell stories. There you go. <laughs> don't worry. I'm. What happens at Bodmin stays, stays at Bodmin. Yeah, that's right. That's it. <laughs> Only time you've ever heard me scream on an investigation was because of that man. Oh wow. Well. Mm. Share. Well, so I'm there with Gaynor, Gaynor Clark and we were in the area that was the original entrance and you've got the toilet okay. block and right. i don't get scared people have tried yeah. i don't get scared i don't get i might scared. get unnerved and my intuition might say get out now but i don't right. i don't scream when things happen anyway we're walking down this pitch black corridor and suddenly we hear this very deep canadian voice go hello and we're like what? because we didn't <laughs> see him and we're looking around going where are you i'm over here the, where, where? <laughs> he was sat on a chair in a corner we genuinely couldn't see him oh, until God he turned no. his torch on all we could do was hear this blooming disembodied canadian voice <laughs> and it made us jump it made us jump so he's quite oh, proud of the you. fact he's the only person who's been able to make me jump on an investigation oh bless you that's so cool i love it yeah <laughs> <laughs> um that that's a true it is a true story actually oh, it is a true so story cool. yeah. so no he's 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 looking after he's he's looking after rachel and i when we go across the pond okay. in may yeah. so really looking forward to spending time with my my canadian friend and oh, then we're gonna cool. we're going to fort mifflin as well which um oh. For anyone who is a lover of history, go and check out Fort Mifflin's page because they got really, really badly flooded and damaged recently. And they are actually trying to raise some funds to do some emergency restoration work. So if if you are a lover of history and you can spare a few quid, a few dollars, I'm oh, sure they'd really, really appreciate it because say, yeah. the, the damage was quite extensive um, and they want to try and, yeah, they yeah. want to try and restore it a bit as much as possible. Oh, bless you. Obviously, I didn't do the cottage with you, dude. If you're talking about the one you threw up in, I wasn't there. Um, unfortunately. <laughs> See, but no, it for, for <laughs> it's true. It, it, it was that bad. He It made him physically sick. It was that bad. Um, oh, no, so that's true. Oh, God. I can't remember Wes would be able to tell the story. I wasn't there. I just remember I him might have heard it, actually, sick. yeah. Yeah, I think Wes but, but, yeah, Mifflin, yeah, Mifflin got very badly damaged. And oh, um, they're trying to do restoration work. So if anyone can spare a few quid to help out the fort that saved America, as it's called. I mean, it's, it seems ironic that British people trying to help an American fort, but it's still it's quite still important history. history. Yeah, it's still history. Right. So if anyone can spare yeah. a few quid, I'm sure they'd appreciate it. All right, bless you. Right, OK, we've got to finish now, but thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, and you can get some sleep. Uh, yeah, that's what I was trying to think of, but I'm shocking with names. I was thinking about the one I've been to on Loch Ness. So I thought, oh, I couldn't even remember what that was called. Um, Bolskine House, yeah. Yes, Bolskine. yeah, it was, was owned by Jimmy Page. It was yeah, owned by Jimmy it. Page yeah. at one point, I went, yeah. I went in September, I've got to put some photos of it wow. because I've got permission to show them. So I actually mm. did a tour of the outside of the building. So They're restoring I, it, aren't I, they? The yeah, they are, yeah. Mm. I went round it, it, well, the outside. Um, they've come on since then on what they've done, which is great. You know, a few months on, from, well, five months now until on from there. But yeah, that's it. It was. Mm. Uh, but yeah, uh, glad you enjoyed it. But uh, take care, everyone. Yes, thank you, everyone, for tuning and, in. Uh, I appreciate thank it. You. Thanks for all the comments. Thanks for all the laughs. And um, Penny will sort you out when she sees you. What can I say? <laughs> Thanks a lot. Bye. <laughs>